This is the 67th lecture in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the applications of fiber optics at electrical utilities. Electrical utilities began using fiber optics almost as soon as they became commercially available in the early 1980s. The advantages that were touted for fiber optics that they could transfer more information longer distances were very important for the electrical utilities. But sometimes even more important was the fact that fiber optics were all dielectric. Glass was not affected by electromagnetic radiation. So fiber optic communication systems could be used, for example, alongside high voltage transmission lines. So we're going to talk about how, in the last 40 years, the use of fiber optics has evolved in the electrical utilities and how they are planning to use fiber optics for other applications like rural broadband in the future. Fiber optics are used in all aspects of the electrical utilities business. In the generation, transmission, and distribution of electric power, in the new field of energy storage, and then even at the consumer level. Fiber optics is used for the communications that electrical utilities require in their everyday work. It's used for the management of their electric grid, which is an ex extremely complex and broad project. But fiber optics also provides excess communication capacity in some electrical utilities, so they lease capacity, either in terms of services or dark fiber, to other users of communications. And more and more now, electrical utilities are realizing that they have the networks that allow them to build out broadband systems, including fiber to the home, especially in rural areas. Let's start by looking at the power grid in the United States. There are more than 500 electrical companies that have more than 7,500 generating stations and 160,000 miles of high voltage transmission lines. Once those lines terminate in substations near population areas, it leads to millions of miles of distribution lines that connect up consumers. In fact, the U.S. power grid connects 145 million customers. It's interesting to compare the power grid, which is on the left, with the map on the right, which shows the main connections of the Internet backbone. And what you can see, if you look closely, is the two match very closely. Because where we need power, we need communications, and vice versa. So the electrical utilities are producing power and delivering it along actually the same routes as people deliver information over the Internet. The generation of electricity is quite diverse. There are natural gas and coal-fired power plants, nuclear plants, and then a whole category of renewables, which includes hydroelectric power like Hoover Dam here, wind, solar, and geothermal. All of these sources of generation actually require fiber optics for their management and integration into the electric grid. Fiber is especially important for alternative energy. Wind, solar, and other alternative energy systems need precise control and management to integrate their power with a power grid. Remember, wind only generates electricity when the wind blows, and solar when the sun shines. All of these are connected with fiber optics for management and control. 
Here's an interesting example of alternative energy. This is a solar power generating system. These towers you see in the middle have light focused from the sun on the tower to generate heat and steam which runs generators. The people who built this, the Ivanpah Solar Generating System, described it like a nuclear reactor, except the nuclear pile is 93 million miles away. It's the sun. The aerial photo on the left shows you the size of Ivanpah. There are three of those giant towers, each surrounded by 120,000 mirrors. Of course, regular photovoltaic solar takes a lot of space too. If you look to the arrow on the left, you'll see a dark spot on the ground, almost as large, and that's a photovoltaic farm. Ivanpah has three towers, each with 120,000 mirrors. Each of those mirrors has to be controlled in real time, so it focuses the light of the sun on the top of the tower. It turns out there are 13,000 fiber optic cables controlling those 360,000 mirrors. It took 12 technicians two years to install all the fiber at Ivanpah. High voltage transmission lines connect the generating stations to substations near populations for distribution. These towers carry high voltages, hundreds of thousands of volts in some cases. Practically all transmission towers carry fiber optics for communications and grid management. And of course, fiber is not bothered by the high voltage since it's glass. And that makes it an ideal communications medium for these kinds of transmission towers. Alongside transmission lines, you'll also see buildings that are used for a combination of grid management and communications. And if you look closely, like the red arrow on the right is pointing to, you'll see large splice closures and coils of cable. And that actually is fiber optic cable that's coming into the hut. There are four typical applications of fiber optic cable in transmission towers. Optical power ground wire and optical power phase conductor are actually power cables with fiber optics in the center of the cable. Optical power attach cable, OPAC, and ADSS are regular fiber optic cables that have different types of installations on the tower. We'll talk about all of them. The ground wire is the top wire on the transmission tower. It's the one that provides the ground for the electrical system and also conducts to ground any lightning strikes. The power conductors are below it. Both optical power ground wire and optical power phase conductors are power cables that inside have a tube that contains optical fibers. Here's what OPGW looks like. The conductors are on the outside around a metal tube and inside are basically loose tube fibers. This cable is a power conductor or a ground conductor but inside there's fibers. And remember the fibers, they are all dielectric. So they are not affected by the electrical voltage or current in the cable on the outside. You can f always spot OPGW on a transmission tower because it's brought to the ground to splice and bring into the huts that are used for communications and control and you'll see coils of OPGW on the side of the tower like you see where the red arrow is pointing in the picture on the right. 
Another way of installing fiber optics on long transmission lines is to use an all dielectric fiber optic cable and wrap it or lash it to the actual power conductors or ground wire on the outside. This is a picture from AFL of their Skywrap system that wraps fiber around the outside of the conductors. A type of fiber optic cable that's often used for the expansion of communication networks and transmission lines is all dielectric self-supporting cable, ADSS. This is a cable with extra strength members to allow long unsupported strands on the order of half a kilometer without a messenger wire. Without a messenger wire, there's no worries about conductivity, grounding, and the like. It's installed below the power conductors on the tower's poles. It is installs very rapidly, and it saves a lot of cost. That's why ADSS is very popular as a way of expanding communications using fiber optics along transmission lines. Transmission cables are terminated in substations where transformers reduce the voltage and connect up to the distribution network serving consumers. Distribution can be done aerially or underground, depending on the requirements of the locale. Distribution networks tend to be aerial unless underground cables are required in major urban areas. Utility poles have two areas or spaces for cables. At the top is the power space, where the power conductors are run and transformers are mounted. Below that is the telecom space, where low voltage cable for telephones, cable television, and other communication services are run separately. The poles used for electrical distribution in suburban and urban areas can get very busy as you can see from these pictures. With all the cables for telephones, cable television, the utility company's communications, and all the cables being installed for internet service providers, things can get quite busy. As you can see with that technician working on the right, there are actually four messenger wires in the telecom space on that pole and two of them already have large bundles of cable. Getting more cables in there can be tricky, but somehow or another they do it. Fiber to the home has become a major application in many areas around the world. Electrical utilities, along with telecom companies and occasionally cable TV companies, already have the rights to bring cables into the home. So quite a few utilities are now running their own fiber-to-the-home system. Besides using the fiber to provide internet service for fiber-to-the-home, the electrical utility can, of course, also use it to read the electric meter and control it to help manage the consumption of electricity. So electrical utilities install fiber optics for their own use for managing their electric power grid, what we call smart grid, microgrids, and now energy storage, and integrating alternative energy into the grid, and using it for communications among their personnel, substations, and equipment. They even use fiber optics as sensors. Fiber makes a great sensor for very high voltages and very high current. So those are three major applications of fiber optics in the electrical utilities. The electrical utilities often have excess capacity in their fiber optic networks. So over the years, they've learned they can lease capacity over their network, either in terms of providing communication services or just providing dark fiber. The customers for this excess capacity on utility networks tend to be communications companies, telecom and internet, particularly now data centers 
which transmit massive amounts of data back and forth over the Internet, and, of course, governments, local, state, and federal, who need communication services along the same routes as the electric grid. As we mentioned earlier, electrical utilities are well positioned to provide fiber to the home services. They can use it to connect the electric meters at the home, provide internet service, either as an ISP themselves or partner with an ISP. There are plenty of companies who are looking for dark fiber to provide internet services over. Chattanooga's electrical power board is a prime example of an electrical utility delivering internet services over fiber to the home. Chattanooga's electricity power board is a prime example of how building a fiber to the home system benefits both the utility and the community. They were able to use their fiber for grid management, offer internet service, and the city, touting the capability of the EPB's fiber to the home system, was able to gain a major industrial company to move into the area and turn their city, a quiet little city, into a technology-focused marketplace. Electrical utilities are particularly well-suited for rural broadband. Traditional telecom companies don't like the rural areas because it's almost impossible to make money. The cost of building the infrastructure, providing the service, doesn't appeal to them. But electrical utilities, with the help of the U.S. government, have built out electrical service to almost every home in America. So now we have a situation that we need to provide internet service to these areas, and the electrical utilities already have the infrastructure to build on. So adding fiber optic cables, like these guys are doing at an electrical co-op in California, is relatively easy and simple and cost-effective, especially with government assistance. Rural electrical co-ops are particularly well-suited for building out rural broadband. There are 69 generation and transmission co-ops in the U.S. and 800 electrical distribution co-ops. These cover 42 million customers in 56% of the country. And you know those are the people in rural areas that we know don't have and do need rural broadband. These are great candidates for fiber optic networks and rural co-ops are well positioned to fulfill that need. And the FOA has been working with quite a few of them and we have stories already of how they have been successful at bringing broadband to areas where no one thought it was possible. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the International Professional Association of Fiber Optics. The FOA has lots of resources that can help you understand fiber optics, understand your applications, and plan for the future. We have almost a thousand pages of technical information in the FOA guide online and more than two dozen free online courses at FiberU. We also have 11 textbooks in four different languages available. So FOA has the information that you need. You can find that information by going to our website at foa.org and looking for the online guide or go to fiberu.org where you'll find more than two dozen free online self-study courses. We're the FOA, the International Professional Association of Fiber Optics and the worldwide certification body for fiber optic technicians.